Hey everyone, and welcome back to the galaxy. Today we will be creating an awesome 2D logo from an image. In my project, I'm starting with two layers, a transparent background layer and my photograph layer. To start, we want to create a color palette from our image and grab the color we want to transfer to the logo. To open up the color palette dialog, go up to Windows, Dockable Docs, down to Palettes. After this new dialog opens up, we want to click on the paper icon with a plus, which will let us create a new palette. I will dock this Palette Editor dialog and close the Palette Selector dialog. To create color swatches for this palette, select the eyedropper tool and make sure that Add to Palette is selected underneath Pick Target. Then, click on the colors in the image you want to include in the final logo. I will grab this white body color, body shadows, dark eye area, beak, and beak shadows. Once we have completed that, we can start blocking out shapes. We will use the Paths tool to create these shapes. I will also open up the Paths dialog. When blocking out colors, look for high areas of contrast. We don't need to include every small detail and color. We just want to grab the overall essence of the object. For this photograph, I just want to illustrate this bird. So I will start by tracing around the head and neck shape. As you are creating these shapes, feel free to take some artistic license and change them to your liking. For instance, I'm going to create a taper at the bottom of the neck, instead of this straight line. This will make the shape look a bit more natural, and not just cut out of a previous photograph. After I've closed this head and neck path, I'm going to continue the same process of tracing around the beak and eye area. To separate paths before drawing out a new one, click this page icon with a plus, or right-click in the Paths dialog and select New Path. Separating paths will come in handy when we are blocking in color. Now that I have these three paths that correspond to the eye, beak, and body area, we can move on to blocking in shadow. Like I mentioned before, we are just trying to capture the essence of these areas. I won't trace the shadows exactly line by line, or even include all of the shadows. Experiment with the different shadow areas and see which ones you'd like to include or leave out. Remember, create a new path for each new color or area block. The shadows I draw out on the body will all be contained on one path, because they will be the same color. After I've drawn out these body shadow paths, notice how they protrude from the main body path. This is no problem, as we will be using layer masks for areas of shadow that need to be contained within the base shapes, like the shadow of the beak and the shadow of the body. Now I will create a final new path for the beak shadow. After we've drawn out all our paths, it's time to fill them with color. If all your paths don't have the visibility toggled on, now is the time to do that. Once that's done, it's time to move back over to the Layers dialog. Here we want to create a new layer for each different block of color. To create a new layer, click this page with a plus icon, or right-click the Layers dialog and select New Layer. Make sure that each new layer you create has a transparent background. For my photograph, I will create different layers for the body, beak, eye, body shadow, and beak shadow. Now that we have all our layers, we can block in color. Here is the best workflow to use. First, select the layer that corresponds with the path you're going to fill. 
Then select the color you want to use via the color palette or the foreground select tool. Using the path tool, I will click on the path outline I want to fill. If a path is already active and you want to select a different path, hold Option slash Alt on a Mac or Control plus Alt on a PC. This will switch your path tool to move mode, allowing you to select between different paths. Make sure you re-trigger this keyboard shortcut for every path you select. If I hold down this keyboard shortcut as I select another path, and then immediately try to select another path while still holding down this shortcut, it does not work. To select this body path, I will hold Option slash Alt since I'm on a Mac, and click this path. Once a path can be edited, these path points will appear. Then, we're going to click on the Path Tool option that says Fill Path. From here, I will set this to Solid Fill, which will fill it with this foreground color, and click Fill. After filling a path, select the next layer you want to fill and choose a color. Then, using the shortcut from before, I'm going to click on the next path. And again, click on the option Fill Path. Using this method, I will also fill in the eye shape. Now that we have all the basic shapes filled in, we can block in the shadows. I will toggle off the visibility of the base shape paths. So this next process is easier for you to see. Like I mentioned before, we can use layer masks to make sure these shadows are contained within the lines of the base shapes. First, I will fill in the body shadows. To create a layer mask that wraps around the contours of this body shape, I will first right-click on the body shape layer. From this menu, go down to Alpha to Selection. After this selection becomes active, I will now right-click on the layer destined for the body shadows. From this menu, I will go down to Add Layer Mask. The option we want to choose here is Selection. I can also go up to Select, None, to get rid of this active selection. Now, if I click Show Layer Mask on this body shadow layer, we can directly see in our canvas which areas the new shadow color will be confined to. The areas in white will be visible, while the areas in black will not show. Moving back to the normal view, I will also make sure that the layer thumbnail is selected, not the mask. See how this highlight moves as I click between the two. Then I will use the same process as before and select this body shadow path and fill in the color. If you notice that any of your layers are unordered while filling in these colors, simply click and drag them to reorder them. After filling the shadow, I can also change this opacity to make it a little less dramatic. Or if you want it more dramatic, increase the opacity. You can do this with any layer. For the beak shadow, I will use the same process. Now that we have our final colors blocked out, I will toggle off the visibility of the remaining paths. and the original photography layer. You can leave your logo as is or complete the following steps to outline it. To outline the entire logo, we first want to group these logo layers together. To do that, I will create a layer group by selecting this folder icon or right-clicking in the Layers dialog and selecting New Layer Group. To place layers within this group, just click and drag them inside. Now that we have all our layers in this new layer group, we can right-click on the Layer Group thumbnail and go down to Alpha to Selection. And our whole logo will be outlined by a new active selection. Before we create this outline, we want to place it on a new layer. 
so I will quickly create a new layer inside of this layer group and drag it beneath all the pre-existing layers. I will also make sure that it is active. Then we can create this outline in one of two ways. You can go up to Edit, Stroke Selection, and make your changes in this new dialog, or go up to Select, Grow, adjust the size, and click OK. Now using the bucket tool, I will fill in this outline layer, making sure I select the color I want it to be in this foreground selector. And then you can go up to Select, None to get rid of those marching ants. And here is the final logo. To this you can add text or basically anything your heart desires. Here's a few extra tips. When working with a design that has a lot of layers, you may want to move the entire design at once. To do this, we need to link these logo layers together by clicking the area to the right of the visibility icon on each layer you want to link. Now all these layers will transform together. See as I use the Move tool on one of these layers how they all move simultaneously. This is useful if you want to scale this entire logo at once or apply any other transformations. You can also merge these layers together by right-clicking on the layer group and selecting Merge Layer Group. But after this, you will not be able to edit the individual layers. Finally, we want to shrink these layers' boundary sizes closer to this logo. To do that, click on the Layer Group thumbnail then go up to Layer, down to Crop to Content. Now that our layer boundaries are flush to the logo, we can more easily use tools like the Align tool and center this logo in our project. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, consider subscribing for more awesome content. For more in-depth graphic design discussion, be sure to join our Facebook group, where you can share your projects, ask questions, and even get discounts on future courses we release.